There is no real ending. It's just the place where you stop the story. Frank Herbert. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hull. And I'm Lee Esses. And I couldn't let this month pass without celebrating the birthday of the author of Dune. I also believe that when this episode drops, the movie drops the next day. Nice. Okay. Yay. I knew the movie was coming soon. I wasn't sure exactly when. Before we get into today's episode, we want to remind you, send us your frequently asked questions, Facebook, Instagram, or our email. That way, our December series, which is answering your frequently asked questions, we'll have all your questions lined up and ready to go and answer. Today's episode, we are talking about plotting your series. It's very easy to finish book one and be still so enamored with the characters that you want to keep writing and then you start book two and you get about halfway through and this other idea gets shinier and shinier and you just sort of abandon it. And so you've had this idea and you've marketed this as book one and you don't have any of the rest of the series. Today's workbook that we're talking about is to help prevent that exact thing. So are you reading a series right now? I'm almost done with the Jack Reacher series. That's one that I keep thinking that I only have like a book or two left and then a couple more pop up somehow. It's like, I didn't realize this book existed because each book is a standalone. You don't have to read them in order. You just sort of go, okay, it says Jack Reacher on the cover. I'll buy it. (laughs) What about you? I am actually reading a short story set in the Sidoverse series by Brandon Sanderson. This is the young adult sci-fi spaceship battle. He has the third book coming out, I believe, at the end of next month. But he's releasing a couple of novellas in between leading up to the release of the third one that he co-authored with somebody else. And it's really interesting. Brandon Sanderson is very well known for his series structures. We already know in the Cosmere universe, he has 10 books planned for that in two different sections. There's going to be five books and then five books all within that world. But he also has all these other connecting novels in the Cosmere. So you have then the Mistborn trilogy and the second Mistborn series. And you have Warbreaker and Elantris that are technically standalones, but they tie into the rest of it. So he has done amazingly intricate plotting for not just one series, but multiple series and how they all tie in together. I might be a fangirl. (laughs) You may have caught somewhere in that rant. She said he plots these series out in detail. This workbook that we're covering today is mostly a notebook for you to think through what happens in your series. So not only who your good guy and your villain are for your first book, but what stays the same between that one and the next book and what is different. If they're a team investigating murders, your villain's going to be different every time. In my Legends series, the main character was different, but the ultimate villain was the same across all of them. So each book, they're defeating a sub-villain, and then the main villain still gets away. He's a Moriarty-type character. So a couple of episodes you can look to to help you in this process would be Season 12, Episode 8, when we talked about marketing your writing. We talked about sequels during marketing. On the counter to that, one of the writing myths that we covered in Season 20, Episode 9, was Everything's Better is a Trilogy. Sometimes standalone is just fine. But if you do choose to take on a series, before you start, you need to know what the series is going to be about. Is it going to be a Jack Reacher style series where every individual novel is a standalone, everything's condensed, contained within that novel? Or is it going to be something a little more Sanderson where you have a story arc that reaches over the span of 10 different books or a dune that's who knows how many books. So in your notebook, we have seven different sections. We're assuming you're plotting your series no longer than Harry Potter. 
if you're doing the Sanderson style, you can do two of these workbooks of five and five, but each of them have the same basic information. So it's a very loose plot for each one, problem and solution. So you have an idea of what happens in this story. So as you're writing down your personal notes or you're filling out this workbook, make sure you keep things brief. There's a time for writing the whole series and then there's a time for just writing down the bare bones. This workbook is about getting just those basic details in to remind you for when you're looking at the whole series and how you're going to approach the next book. What stays in this book? What happens in the next book? If you want to plot in detail each individual book, check out our second episode this month, The Hero's Journey. That goes way more in depth onto each step of the individual book process. So in every book, whether you have five or seven, when you are just doing that series structure, you need to look at things like the title and the problem and solution of book one. That problem, that solution helps keep you focused on knowing what the story is about so you know where to start it, when to finish it. And when you're looking at it from this view, you can know how this solution is the yes but to book two. The next thing you should know for this book is who the hero is, who the villain is. In the case of Harry Potter, hero is Harry Potter. The villain does rotate because you do have a different character that's being introduced every single time. Umbridge is going to be different from Lockhart. So you may have the series villain still of Voldemort, but who is the villain of book one? And that wraps back to your problem and solution. If you have a different villain, that'll help you feel satisfied at the end of the book. You also need to consider what the location of this book is. Are they back at school or is it like in book seven where they're traveling? Also, new locations introduced. Do they go to the Shrieking Shack in Hogsmeade at this point? Do they go underwater at this point? The other things to list are the hero's internal and external struggles for this book alone. Take book four, for instance. Harry Potter's external struggle was the Goblet of Fire and having to fight and try to survive this thing he never wanted to join in the first place. But his internal struggle was his relationship with Ron falling to pieces because Ron felt betrayed. And that book is a great example of very easy to determine Act 1, Act 2, Act 3. What happens in each one and what happens at the turning points between acts. In the case of the Triwizard Tournament, there was a dragon, there were mermaids, and then there was a crazy maze. Act 1, Act 2, Act 3. And then, of course, you need to establish the footholds. What footholds do you have in this book and how do they extend to the next book? Wormtail brings Voldemort back to life. And then finally, it's the branding information for this book alone. So you have the series brand. In the last series I published, each of the taglines for the books included the word prophecy in it somewhere. Can a prophecy be broken? A prophecy is fulfilled. These things help not only connect them, but having individual taglines as you come up with them. This is a place to put them down. And you'll repeat all of those for book two, book three, book four, however many books you want to put in your series. The only new thing that pops up in the others is new information that's introduced and new characters that are introduced. Do we meet Sirius Black? And you may want to take a look at what footholds were established before in previous books and which ones have been resolved. Those footholds will help you connect the series and help you dive deep into book five when it feels like things are going to get awkward and you aren't quite sure what to do. Those footholds help give you somewhere to launch from when creating your new story. That wraps up our brief explanation on how to plot the series. All of these episodes that we are doing this month are accompanied by workbooks. You can find those on Amazon. 
and you can get a printed version there. Or if you want a free version, we have the PDFs on our website. Just head to writingrootspodcast.com. Writing a series can be very overwhelming, especially if you don't know what you're doing with the series. This particular workbook is to help you get the reins on your dream and wrangle this massive beast into something you can tame, something you can ride, and something you can thoroughly enjoy, and something you can write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. <laughs>